about it. And uh, the, the, the thing that I have noticed about uh, releasing trapped emotions is that it, when we use this methodology in document K, which is a little more sophisticated than the muscle testing release process in the book, it provides a clearer exposing of the root. And I've got some notes here that I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, I spent most of my childhood in the country, and we always had gardens, sometimes two gardens at a time. And I can relate emotion release to uh, pulling weeds in the garden, right? And what, some of the, the thing about weeds is, you know, some of the weeds were easy to pull, and you'd grab onto them, and they'd come right out. And then others were harder. And I found that with the with the uh, tough to pull weeds, that um, which I likened to trapped emotions, I found that if I exposed enough of the roots before pulling, it, it would come out. And, and because I'd gotten the full root out, uh, it would never grow back. But if I didn't expose enough of the root and tried to pull the weed off, then I'd just end up breaking the top off and the weed would grow back in a couple of weeks. So the wonderful thing about using document K and the jet testing methodology is that the muscle testing will always let us know whether it's an easy weed to pull or whether it's a hard weed to pull. And as we saw in this example that I just did of an, an actual emotion release, it was a fairly easy weed to pull, thank God, because I wouldn't have wanted to try and figure out what kind of shameful uh, experience that I received in the womb. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the, uh, the occurrence of emotions in the womb as we go along here. And so, in short, in some cases, getting back to the analogy of the weed, in some cases we don't have to uh, dig very deep at all. Uh, to be able to get the signal to clear the trapped emotion. But in other cases, there's more uncovering that we have to do before we can do the clearing process. But again, it's the muscle testing that will lead you very expertly through that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a little bit more of a look in depth at document K and we'll be, we'll be taking a look at all of the variations of things that can happen, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and bring that document up next. And let's take a look at it right here. Releasing Emotions, Document K. And as we look here, what you'll see up at the first part here is that we have symbols. And these symbols are depending on how the word is highlighted, what it is that we want you to do. A yellow highlights, we want you to speak these options and then we want you to write down the results. If it has a turquoise highlight, these are, these are options that uh, need to be spoken, but you don't need to write them down, all right? And if it's in bold, that indicates that this is, in fact, a spoken statement. And if you see smaller gray, then that means those are supporting notes. And so you can see some of that going on in this statement right here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at statement number one. The highest priority in releasing trapped emotions is related to my heart wall, hidden heart wall, general emotions, or specific issues. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more in detail about those four options. Uh, again, you know what a heart wall is. And so you'll notice that when I did that example, the first thing I tested for, and we were looking for the highest score with no baseline, so move that baseline off to the side, the highest score wins. And so my highest score was on the heart wall. So you'll also maybe have noticed that I didn't test for a hidden heart wall. And my feeling on that is this, is that if we have a heart wall, then let's go ahead and work there first. But if we get no, that we aren't to work on a heart wall, and then let's go ahead and check for a hidden heart wall. And you can learn more about the heart wall versus the hidden heart wall in Dr. Bradley's book, The Emotion Code. The other thing that you heard me talk about was general emotions. I tested for general emotions. If we're not working on the heart wall, what we can do is allow the muscle testing to guide us into whatever general emotions are up or uh, a, a priority for us to release right now. And then you also heard me talk about specific issue. Now generally, if you have 
a specific issue. Like let's say perhaps it's insomnia and you want to work on that, you can replace the phrase specific issue with insomnia or you can replace it with fear of business failure, whatever issue you feel um, might need some attention. And again, it'll be the muscle testing that guides you as to whether that is a priority for you to be working on right now, okay? All right, let's, um, I also wrote some notes down as I went along here on each one of these. So let me go ahead and take a look at my notes right now. And, oh yes, um, and this doesn't have to do with the uh, document K, but rather with document P right here. What you'll notice on this log is that it has room for eight releases. And uh, what I suggest is that you take the master that's in your kit and make about 20 copies of this and then uh, bind them together or staple them together and you'll have a historical log and uh, right up at the top here there's room for you to put the date so you can go ahead and date that. And it's really interesting to follow the uh, progression and you'll find that Dr. Uh, Nelson's statements in the book are absolutely right on. You never run into the same emotion again and once we release emotion that emotion has been cleared and it tests out at having been cleared even if you come back to it two years later so it's really neat stuff uh, let's see next uh, yes let's go ahead and take a look at uh, number two and if we look at document K again the next statement is this trapped emotion is in column A and it says right here in the notes the supporting note it says to set your baseline first and then test. You're going to be looking for yes and no answers. Plus five or higher is a yes. If the score is plus five or higher, then it's column A, otherwise it's column B. And so I have a few notes about that uh, relative to um, the scores, okay? So when we're working with emotion code work, most of it is in the form of a yes or no um, uh, type of uh, statement or response that we get. So when we have variations in our yes scores, for example, you get plus five one time and plus 10 another time, it indicates just how strong that yes is and how much juice the uh, emotion that you're testing on has. And on the other hand, if you've regularly been getting, let's say for example, your yeses are real strong yeses and you're getting plus 20s and plus 25s, if you subsequently get a plus five, that isn't necessarily so much a yes as it is, is maybe just a little bit of fluctuation in muscle response. Maybe you lost your focus, a temporary lapse in focus at that time. So it's relative to what you've been experiencing as you continue to go through this muscle testing. And each person has their own scale that they work from. Let's take a look at statement number three next. This trapped emotion is in an odd row. And so again, this is a true-false statement. Uh, depending on whether it's odd or even, it has the associated statement. And uh, I want to talk a little bit more about that part of it. So when we're testing on this, let me go to my notes here. When you're testing on the trapped emotion, uh, you'll notice in the example that I was looking for my first yes. And because I was working, I believe, on an even row, let me check my log. Yes, I was working on an even row. Uh, what I did was I said, uh, the, this trapped emotion is in row two. And that was no. And then I said row four. And that was no. And so I did not test row six because by default we knew that that was the even row that it was in because we had previously gotten the, the, the true statement that it was in an even row. And so you don't need to test any further than when uh, you get a yes. Once you get your yes, you're done with it and you're ready to move on to the next statement.